Now we talked about how little space you have on the deck to uh, set up your coils and this is where micro coils are really going to shine. So we're going to create some micro coils out of 28 gauge canthal and I will show you how I do my micro coils now. Alright so I've cut myself a generous piece of 28 gauge um, canthal here. This is canthal A1 pre-annealed from Temco and I have a small screwdriver here and what I'm going to do is begin my wraps around the screwdriver and I'm going to grab a piece of it right here and hold it along the the very beginning of the handle and as I wind I'm trying to keep this wire straight so after I get my first twist in place I'm going to readjust it and make sure it's as close to the uh, handle as possible and again I'm going to try to not twist as I go along because that is how you get lopsided coils. So I have four on there, five, six, and I'm going to twist and slide this as I go, seven, eight. So I'm going to do 8 wraps of 28 gauge per side. There we go. Okay. So I have my coil made, but it's very springy right now. I don't know if you can see this. Let me go ahead and adjust my focus. As you can see, it wants to spring away from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, grab both ends of the wire here, and I'm going to slide it down the screwdriver handle. And I'm going to take a pair of pliers, and I'm going to squeeze it together here so that they're all touching. This isn't a perfect science either. I mean, you ha may have to kind of play around with it a little bit. Um, that's actually pretty good, though. They're mostly not smashed. Then I'm going to take my torch and carefully, without burning my camera, I'm going to heat this until it glows red. There we go, we're getting a nice glow on it. And what that's going to do, and I think I just ran out of gas. I did. So I will be back when I refill my torch. Alright, so we're back and our torch is full. Oh, much better. Get a nice even glow on there. Again, I'm not applying a ton of heat to the, or a ton of pressure to the coil, but I am holding it and trying to squish it together. So basically what we're left with is when I let go of this wire, this keeps its form, which is what we want. I want a nice uh, micro coil that's wound together pretty tightly. Okay, so now I have my micro coils made, and the next step is I'm going to fasten them. And for this, I'm actually going to put my screwdriver back through the micro coil to help it retain its shape. This is going to help us quite a bit. So now. I'm going to loosen up my terminals and I'm always going to wrap the screw clockwise because I want to make sure that it's actually tightening and not getting loosened um, when I'm placing it. Let me go ahead and zoom in here for this section. Hopefully this makes it a little bit easier for you to see. I'm going to try to keep my fat fingers out of the way. And again we are going to adjust these and refire them as necessary once they're positioned. So I'm bringing this as close as I can to the terminals without touching them. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind one screw almost completely around the terminal. And the goal here is to try and get it pseudo fastened in place before we mount our other coil. I found this makes it a little bit easier. So I have one terminal tightened down. Then I have the second one here. Again, I'm trying to bring this closer and center it at the same time. So that's probably good about there. Let me move this wire out of the way. I'm going to spin this almost completely around the nut and tighten it down. So that is pretty good right there. And we really just need them finger tight at this point. Because the goal here is just to get the positioning right on this micro coil. Let me see if I can focus this in. And as you can see, it may have sprung away a little bit. Eh, they still look fairly close. But we may tighten up that gap just a little bit before we're done. So we basically have one coil fastened at this point, but it is not wicked. Now, I'm going to cut these wires, but I'm not cutting them extremely short. Actually, this one's about perfect length, so I'm going to leave him the way he is. This one does need to be trimmed. So I'm going to take my side snips and trim him, and that's just to keep it kind of out of the way. Okay. So now our second coil. Fortunately, I have another screwdriver that's about the same diameter. So I'm going to run him through this coil. Actually, maybe that is not the same diameter. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I can see this one we are definitely going to have to reform because it looks like it's a little bit loose. That's not a big deal. We'll do that once it's in place. So, basically here we're going to follow the same principle. We're going to loosen these terminals a little bit and twist the, ter the wires around the terminals clockwise. And this is where, you remember I said this was a little bit finicky, this is where it comes into play. Because again, you're trying to keep everything positioned properly on two coils. There we go. So this looks pretty good. Wrap him around there. Once you get one of them, that really helps. So now I have one fastened. I just need to get my other one fastened. And while I make sure that this is actually held open, I'm going to tighten these terminals. There we go. My pliers. Okay. I'm going to drill a bit out of this side and trim my wires And there we have our micro coils. Next step is the wick. Okay, so we have our coils, and now I'm going to take some wick here. This is some two millimeter. 
two millimeter silica and I'm going to try to thread a piece that's doubled over through there and what I'm going to do is take a piece of wire and run this around my silica rather loop it make sure it's narrow there and then I'm going to run this right through my coil just like that and then pull it through and what I want to do is make sure that I have enough to reach down into those channels which that's more than enough um, I probably wasted some with how this is positioned but that's okay so uh, what we're going to do is unloop our 28 gauge here and I'm going to trim this just like that and there as you can see we have our wicked micro coil going to do the same thing with the other side so now we have a long piece we need to have a long piece and a short piece on this build so I'm going to trim this a little bit more I'm going to trim these top wicks so that they're pretty short here and I don't want them to take up a, a ton of room there there we go that's pretty good just a tad that's pretty good there let's go ahead and juice up these coils and fire it up I'm going to put some of this new live wire from Vapalicious on here. I really like Vapalicious juice and this is one of their new lines. I like their bottles too. Look at this nice tip on their bottles. Very nice. This is an important step. You need to make sure you prime your wicks. It's going to make it easier to get the wicks into the uh, individual grooves as well. Now you could use cotton in this. It might be a little bit easier with cotton but uh, I really uh, I haven't quite grown used to the taste of cotton yet, even the sterile cotton. And we are going to be using this in hybrid mode, so I'm going to drop a battery into the origin here. There we go. Got a battery in there. Go ahead and screw this in. Hopefully our pin will make contact. No rattle, so I think we're okay. There we go. We're all juiced up. Got some sizzling here. Ooh, that juice smells really good too. Alright, so next step. I found that if you cut your wicks to the right length, they pretty much go right into the grooves here. There's not too much assistance necessary. This one looks like it needs to be pulled over a little bit and it might need to be trimmed as well we just tuck that in there we go There. 
Okay. So we have our wicks in place. Let me get some paper towel there. We look at our juice channels. Our juice channels are not blocked, um, which is important. You need to be able to look in those and make sure that they're not completely blocked. And as you adjust your air control, the juice channels are going to open up more and more um, to give you better flow. So you can see it's exposing the wick on each of these. Okay, that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and talk about the assembly and filling of the rest. So next step here is we need our tank section slash air control. Here's a little rubber o-ring at the bottom. You want to make sure you have it threaded on properly. So you do have to exercise a little bit of care with that. And you do want to tighten it all the way down so it's completely closed. Airflow is completely shut off. Same with juice flow. This should be completely tight. Okay. So both of those are tight. Let me go ahead and lock the switch in my origin here so I do not... Uh, accidentally fire this okay next step is filling we're going to take our squeeze bottle capacity is a little bit light on this guy at two mil I certainly would have preferred a little bit higher capacity so we filled it up here and then we're going to take our retaining ring here slide it over the mouthpiece it does have an o-ring and we're going to tighten it about halfway. Okay, so you can see it's not completely closed. And then I'm going to flip this upside down. And I'm going to open the air control. And what this is going to do is as I tighten this top grommet here. And I loosen the air control. It's going to negate the suction that's in the tank. Basically the... Uh, positive pressure that normally drips juice out and floods when you take a hit. So hopefully this should keep it from flooding too badly. Um, but that should be it for the build process. Let's go ahead and put our drip tip on there. And I'll bring the camera up top so we can take a vape.